Hey everybody and welcome to another Think Geo tutorial video. In today's video we're going to show you how to really quickly create a new WPF application with an interactive map powered by Think Geo UI 12 for WPF and .NET Core 3. And here we are on Windows, uh, but we're also going to be using Visual Studio Code to do this um, because we can with .NET Core. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to our website at thinkgeo.com. If you haven't already downloaded Think Geo Product Center, you'll need to do that. And you can uh, simply do that by opening the Products menu and click Start Building. Uh, make sure you're on the .NET Core 3 tab and click Download for Windows. That's going to go ahead and uh, save that to your computer. Once you have that, you can go ahead and extract and run it. Log in to your ThinkGeo account. And uh, then click on the Desktop for WPF tile and click Start Evaluation. And you'll get 60 days to explore the full functionality of ThinkGeo UI Desktop for WPF. Okay, having done that, let's get right into it. Here is Visual Studio Code. We are going to create a new folder for our project. Uh, this is a, a blank folder here that now, once we have that, We'll open the terminal and here we'll type .NET new WPF. That will scaffold up a new project for us with some boilerplate code. Um, you'll want to open up one of these files here and that will trigger the Visual Studio Code C Sharp extension to say, hey, you have some required assets that we need. Click yes when prompted. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need to do is install the ThinkGeo UI for WPF NuGet package. This is really easy if you have the NuGet Package Manager extension for VS Code. You just type uh, Control shift p pick NuGet Package Manager, uh, Add Package. And now this is case sensitive. You'll want to type thinkgeo.ui, hit Enter, and now pick ui.wpf, and pick the most recent stable version. That's the one not tagged as beta. Uh, in our case, it's 1204. And then uh, you'll be prompted to uh, restore the unresolved dependencies. Click Restore and that NuGet package will be downloaded and you are ready to go. Now that we've done that, let's head over to our main window.xaml. And inside here, the first thing we're gonna do is set up the Think Geo UI map control. So the first thing we need to do is add the namespace. We're gonna call it UC1. And we're just gonna go ahead and set that equal to CLR-namespace thinkgeo.ui.wpf with assembly equals to thinkgeo.ui.wpf. Uh, we're going to set the main window height to 800 by 600, give us a little bit extra room. And then in the grid element, we're going to add our UC1 map view control. This is the actual map. Give it a name of map view. You can call it whatever you like. And when loaded, it will invoke the map view loaded method. We'll close that tag. Now let's flip over to main window.xaml.cs and we're going to add a couple of usings <laughs> using thinkgeo.core and using thinkgeo.ui.wpf. Now inside the uh, main window class, let's define that map view loaded method. We're going to pass into this a sender and routed event args. Okay, so here's where we're going to add the functionality for our map. So the first thing we're going to do is set the map unit to geography unit dot meter. This will set the map to the web mercator projection, which is the uh, projection you normally see in Google Maps, OpenStreetMap, and so forth. Uh, then we need to define a current extent for the map. And that tells it basically what view to cover when it first starts up. We can pass this a new rectangle shape. And here we're going to need to set some large, uh, a large rectangle so that we can see pretty much the entire world. Uh, so what this constructor wants is the uh, minimum x, max y, max x, and min y. So basically the four corners of the rectangle. And we're going to use 10 million. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we're going to add a simple background overlay to our map. And this will just give a nice basic background color to the map. Uh, we'll create a new layer overlay. And then we will say background overlay.layers.add. And this is going to add a simple background layer. This constructor takes a geo solid brush to define what color it is. 
and into that we pass a geo color. Uh, we can do uh, geo colors dot and there's a namespace full of named colors. In this case, we're going to do geo color from HTML and we're going to pass that an HTML hex color that matches the background color of our country land masses on our base map and I'll show you that in a minute. And then finally, on the map view overlays collection, we're going to add this background overlay that we just created. Okay, so that's a solid background color, but now how about our interactive map with the countries of the world and so forth? Well, for that, we'll create another uh, overlay. This one we'll call the cloud raster base map overlay because we're going to get the world's countries from the ThinkGeo Clouds map tile service. And this is built right into ThinkGeo UI. You just create a new ThinkGeo Cloud raster maps overlay. And into this constructor, we're going to need to pass three properties. So we have the client ID, client secret, and map type. The client ID and secret are from the ThinkGeo Cloud. Conveniently, a free ThinkGeo Cloud evaluation account was created for you when you signed up uh, for ThinkGeo. And uh, you would have got in your email a set of keys for a ThinkGeo Cloud client. This is what we're going to want to put in here. Uh, so the client ID, we're going to pass in like so. And then the client secret. Behind the scenes, this is going to be exchanged for a token from the ThinkGeo Cloud that gives you access to uh, the base map layers. And then for the map type, we're going to say ThinkGeo Cloud Raster Maps Map Type dot. And then there's several different map styles. We're going to go with the light style today. So there's our cloud uh, raster overlay. And then once again, we're going to add that to the overlays collection like this. And then finally, we are going to refresh the map view. Take care of a missing uh, semicolon there. Now at this point, if we were to go to the debug menu and click start debugging, we should be able to get a nice window. Here it is with our interactive map and that comes from the ThinkGeo Cloud. Um, this is the light style map and it's got complete global coverage all the way down to the city level. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of these 60 days left watermarks on the map. That comes from your ThinkGeo evaluation. Uh, once you purchase the full product, of course, all the watermarks are removed uh, and you've got nice clean maps. So that's our interactive base map and that was as simple as it was to add this to a WPF application and as you can see, the map view control is uh, basically fills the entire window. In our next video, we're going to be showing you how to go a bit further and add a shape file with custom data on top of this. But for now, we hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time for some more tutorials from ThinkGeo. Thanks for watching.